select board to order. Um, I think right now there's just Cliff and I. So, um, comments or additions, changes to the agenda? Nothing for me. Okay. All right, we can get started. Like I said, I think Rose was going to come on, but maybe she's late getting home from work. Yeah, so so it's item E in the East Montpelier Select Board is here. We're waiting to hear the presentation of the proposed ambulance, whatever it is. Okay. Um, so I'm sharing the screen now with the financials that I sent out. These are through October in FY21. Yeah, we have um, that. Yep. Yeah. Any questions for anybody on that? Um, leave it up there for a minute. Yeah, leave it. Can you scroll down, Toby? Well, you guys all got this sent, so. Right. Yeah. Yes, we, yes, we know that, but it doesn't hurt for us to look at it together. You could run right through it for us if you want to. Yeah. Um. So essentially what really we look at is the um, ambulance versus actual. So here's that page. Um, really nothing to... Um, what page is that? What number? Uh, on the right-hand corner. Right-hand corner. It says page two on that. Page number one. So I guess page I would ask... Two. All page number one. <laughs> That's right. So it's profit loss budget versus actual ambulance is the title. Okay. I think it's like yep. the fourth page. Okay. So that essentially shows what our budget is. This, this column is the budget. This is the actuals to that point. This is the over under on it. And this is the percent of budget spent or collected in income. So, so everybody just, needs to know that we're just midway through the year. Right. Actually, we're, we're well, actually, about so actually, we're only a one third of the year. Yeah. So essentially, we're at 33% of our budget. So if you yeah. look at the total expense line down here, you'll see that we're a little bit over 33%. We're at 36.7. What's really driving that is this 40% of salary. That's always going to be higher than our budgeting because we're staffing, you know, uh, as much as we can. Um, no other really expenses that are out of line. The software one is, right? Yeah, we actually um, purchased two computers for uh, working downstairs in the office and they should, <clears throat> they ended up in this line item, they should actually be in the capital fund rather than here. So that's why that's a little bit off. Yeah. Can you guys get any funding um, through the CARES Act for like, if you had to purchase additional equipment so that staff could work, you know, further apart? Uh, we did, but that was in last year's budget. Through the, from the COVID stuff? Yeah, because it was before G the end of June that we received the CARES money. Okay, so you haven't been able to access any more CARES funds for anything? Well, the state, the state of Vermont had a hazard pay for EMTs, and that shows up here COVID hazard pay up here above, and then we're yeah. 17,200. And that was paid directly to the staff. Good. That, that had nothing to do with operations. That just gave them a bonus for being on the, on the front lines. Um, <clears throat> the other thing of note is collection so far at, at one third of the year, we're at 57,000. If you multiply that by three, we, we're probably gonna be at 150,000 or 160,000 if if revenues contain uh, continue to go that way. And that's what percentage of uncollected? I have no idea. We, we haven't run that report. Okay. What do you usually collect in a year, Toby? Well, I think last year was 140 and the year before that was like 128. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Yeah, so, so 140 was what we did last year. This is tracking to be a little bit more than that if, if those... <clears throat> If, if the amount of <clears throat> the number of calls yeah. stays high. But you never really know because calls and collections are two different things. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, they don't always match up with each other. No, they don't usually match up. So, so it's that's, really irrelevant. So that's ambulance in a nutshell. This is fire. 
Again, nothing really out of the ordinary. <clears throat> the audit is a one time in a year, so that's why that's 91%, so that's complete. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> everything else is really pretty much on track. I was uh, looking at something where the electric, the electric at station two is really high. It's always that. It's a 10,000. I know. It's a 10, I know it is. Right. So it's not out of line. No, but it's just interesting that the, a, a brand new building like that has electricity bills that high. Well, because it has all of the air handlers and all the other equipment yep. in there to make it energy efficient. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Right, I, I bit my tongue on that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so total expense again. It, it, we should be at thirty-three. We're at twenty-six. So actually, on the fire side, we're in. Uh, we're doing well and staying um, below budget. Yeah. Good. Um, so how come uh, Callus managed to underpay their their whole contribution by sixty-five dollars? Is there a story there? Um, no. Don't know. <laughs> Where do you, where is that, Bruce? The second line. Second line. It says oh, that minus, Denise. Huh, there it is, $65. I don't know Denise why. Denise Wheeler took that for coffee money. <laughs> yeah, right. We, we put it towards refreshments. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't see those refreshments. Well, no. <laughs> well, you should we, we don't want We don't want East Montpelier people in Calus right now. <laughs> you, should, you should see two thirds of that $65. Right. We should have. Yeah. That's a good point, Toby. We got to bring that up again. There you go. <laughs> All right. So that's the financials for now. The, nothing else really out of the out of the ordinary. So any other questions on any of that? Not at the moment. No. Okay. So that we talked. It, have we talked at all about how how what we're going to do? I know we talked last year a little bit about moving forward with staffing and 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 the costs associated with that. You'd probably just expect those costs to continue to go up. Um, yeah, it, well, and, and again, uh, as we get more people who fill shifts, um, the, that salary line will go up. And when we look at the budget we proposed, literally the only increase on in the ambulance side is in salary. And that's, that's to accommodate having more people um, in the building when we need them. So let's go right to that since you brought it up. This is the ambulance budget. Which, I have uh, a where... point of order, if I might interrupt. Um, yep. Bruce, do we need to be recording this portion of our meeting? That's Calling. a fair question. Uh -huh. Are you recording this, Toby? Um, I wasn't. I am. Um, nobody's recording it on Zoom. Maybe you're recording it some other way on your computer. Or Orca's on, and they're recording. Oh, good. OK. Thank you. Aren't we supposed to record independent of what ORCA does? We probably should. But at least some of it's been recorded by ORCA since we didn't do it at the beginning. Well, host, will you uh, give us permission to record? Yeah, you can record anytime you like. Um, Ty Roland, <laughs> whoever is, is at Ty Roland's uh, account, would you please yep. activate the recording permission? Under the security badge. Yeah, that's Toby. Toby's hosting it. Okay. Do you know how to do that, Toby? I'm looking right now. There's a security badge down to the left side of the middle of your screen at the bottom. And if you click on that, one of the options is to allow people to record. What does the security badge look like, Carl? It looks like a badge. You don't you don't have it. Only the oh. host has it. Oh. Um, I don't see that as a choice under the badge. Okay, if you are using Ty's account, which you seem to be, as he says, right. uh, I'm viewing Ty's screen. No, I'm viewing TT's screen. That would be Toby Talbot's screen. Well, that's, so I don't... Ty, that's the Ty, Ty Roland account. So I, okay. you can see what's there. And it, just does, it doesn't have anything that says... No, below that, in the Zoom below where it says participants and chat and mute and stop video, that sort of thing. You, you might have to put your mouse all the way to the bottom of the screen to get it to, to come up. Uh, it's not coming up. Uh, that's probably because you're sharing the screen. Yeah. It, it's probably on the sharing bar. Yeah, there's the little record button is down in the, like towards the, the screen. 
it's not the record button that he needs to push. We need him to push the security badge and allow others to record. Yeah, it's not an option in this. In this. Um... Okay. Well, I've got a voice recording going of it. Is that so, sufficient? So, Toby, why don't you push the record button? And when it says, "There we go." Yeah. There you right. go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we're on the proposed budget, right? Right. So do we have a copy of this? We do. Yep. We on, on Excel? This is on Excel. Yes. Yeah, we, we've got it as a PDF on the website. Okay, I'm just trying to compare it, that's all. Yeah. Now, is this the one you did, Bruce? Yes. Um, so essentially the driving force on any increase on this budget is the salary line item. Essentially, um, since you guys had talked about the two of you adding $37,500, um, that's the salary increase here on line 5,500 salary. So <clears throat> everything else essentially, and, and the number up above here shows the balance that's above that 3750 so essentially the, the rest of the line items increases would only total seven thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollars for east montpelier and three thousand nine hundred and sixty for calix oh and that's above the 37 five that's correct okay so that was my confusion there yeah no. okay so it's 37 plus yeah we need to pay 3960 correct so 37. No, 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 no. So hold on. On this line on East Montpelier, it's plus 25,000 because that's your share of 3750. Plus, plus. Plus 7,009. So you'd be at about 30, whatever that is total. So why did we say? So the 37.5 is the split. Right, so 25,000 for East Montpelier and 12,500 for Callis, plus for Callis, the additional 3,960 plus 12,005. So right. why, why is there two amounts? Because we'd already agreed to the 37,5. But right. yeah, but why the additional amount? Because that's oh. the other line item. That's just for salary. Yeah. That's you agreed 37.5 just for the salary increase to cover salary increases. Oh, so the 39.60 is just overall Either. budget increase, not salary. That's other items on there, not including salary. So, you know, okay. if a dispatch went up and uh, workers' comp will go up a little bit with more salary. You know, there's just small increases on all okay. the other line items. And that's what essentially that's the only other increase you'll see. Okay, I just wanted to be clear. So, so Callis is total increase for FY twenty two, sixteen thousand four hundred and sixty. Yeah. Any other questions on line items that are up there? Um, Cliff, do you have any questions? No, I do not. Thank you. So I have to go to a second alarm fire in Barry City. We'll see you guys. If I don't see you, have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, thanks, Ty. Have a good Christmas, Ty. Thank you. Be safe. Hey, thanks. I'm leaving also. All right. See you, Albert. See you, Albert. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Uh, okay, so this is the fire budget proposal, FY22. Um, can you go back up to the top real quick? Okay, so where ours is going down by 3,860. Correct. Okay. Just 
Any questions on line items? No. Um, I do have a question, an audit question when the time is appropriate, mm -hmm. before I forget. Okay, Most so of the stuff is pretty flat from looks of it. Yeah, yeah. We, and there's some savings and stuff, particularly vehicle repairs. We're, um, of course, with newer vehicles, we're hoping there's less there. So we're counting on not having major breakdowns. Yeah, that's, that was, a, that's just such a guessing game in my experience. Yeah. You know, right. yep. it's just a complete guess. You never know. So it's, I mean, it's great that you're trying to do it, but right. just never um, know. So essentially with the reduction in the fire and yeah. the, and the small increase, not including the 37.5 in salary, essentially the only thing that you'll really have an increase on for both towns combined is the $37,500. Right. Because yeah. yeah. the so fire the, size is a reduction. Right. Yeah. So for the combined budgets, the only yeah. increase you're going to see is the 37.5 that you were already counting on. For the, well, the, the thirty-seven uh, five plus the other. No, no, the other gets taken away because of reduction on the fire side. Right. Yeah. It even it kind of evens out, but still. It's a wash. Right. You can see right here. Here's here's the. So essentially, not including the thirty-seven five, East Montpelier will go up one hundred ninety-eight. Yeah. And Callis will go up a hundred dollars. So essentially, yeah. essentially, except for the thirty-seven five, it's pretty much a flat line, flat line yeah. budget increase. But Callis. Cal still owes 65. So right, you know. I know. <laughs> I'll have to check into that. I don't know what happened with that. That would be coffee. Uh, I've heard maybe, that. May, maybe it's a billing error. Maybe I've you heard, took it out, Denise. I've heard the check is in the mail. Yeah, it probably <laughs> is. Yeah, don't send cash. Right. Yeah. <sighs> okay, um, so that takes care of the financial review and the budgets for the 22. Um, Capital plan? Yep, yeah. it's, com it's coming up. There it is. <clears throat> so um, these are the these are the actual numbers for the loans that we have on the rescue two and the new ambulance rescue three. Can you can you make that bigger? I didn't print this one off. Yeah, that's better. The loan figures are in the long-term reserve line. Is that it? Where's the where are the loan amount? Oh, over there. It's, yeah. So I see them. So here, th these right. are the these are the actual loan payments on yeah the two rescue trucks. Got it. Okay. This is yeah. the um. When when it shows Toby, when it shows the. Um, replace year is that the year we replaced it or the year we're going to replace it because there's one shown for 22 i'm not sure what you're talking about this line here that says on the capital budget that says replace year and then i'll see it 22 i see 22 no, it's, it's 2000 is 2020 Oh, it's, oh, it's 2032. It looks like a 22. Okay. So we're going to have to replace. Right. So the, the model year is the year that we purchased it. The, um, this is the current age. This is the year that we should be replacing it. You can see this is the one that's really up. Remaining life, essentially, when you hit zero, there's no remaining life. But you're not asking for truck money this time around. Well, we might because uh, it's, again, we're probably a year behind on that because we needed to look at that. Is there anyway, something wrong with the vehicle? Yeah, that's a fire truck. No, I said, is there something wrong with it? Um, it's getting rusty and uh, it goes in the shop quite often. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, this, the standard for national fire uh, NFPA standard is 25 years and we can extend it, but it can't be a first due engine as a 25 year old truck. Why would we do a loan 
and, and, and go beyond the life of the vehicle. There's no loan on that. What's the thirty? What, well, if you go over to the right, 20, 22, 23, 24, What's the that would be to, that would be to purchase the new truck. That's if you buy one. Okay. That's when so the payments that, start. Right. Okay. So essentially, we've moved it off one year. It actually right. it, it should be here where we should be purchasing it. The other thing is when you purchase and take a loan, you can actually pay the first loan in arrears, the first year of the loan in arrears. So you can actually put that off for another year as far as your liability for paying the loan. Would you go to the bond bank or something like this? No, we do commercial loaning. We get a pretty good rate uh, with local banks. Hey, Toby, if I could interrupt for a moment, sorry. Um, I just got a message from Rose. She needs somebody to admit her into the meeting. Uh, you might have to exit your screen share and let her in. Right. Hi, Rose. Hey, Rose. There you are. We missed you. <laughs> I've only been trying for 15 minutes. Oh, no. Yeah, my computer is frozen. Like, none of the icons are working. And um, so, of course, I do this on my cell phone anyway. But, yeah, so I got a frozen computer and very limited. But I've been trying. Oh, yeah, I wondered what happened to you. Yeah, I've been sitting here trying. Well, when, when the host is in screen share mode, they don't always see that somebody's in the waiting room. Okay. That's correct. So are you going to be asking us to put something on the warning to buy a new truck? Well, I think we'll just go directly to you because that's the, that's the, um, that's the procedure right now, unless you decide you have to put it to the voters to go ahead. Well, normally you do if you're going to bond something out for a lot. Any any loan that's going to exceed a year, you have to have voter approval. No, you don't. Not, what? Not oh, way we're set up. Non because why? It's not set up that way. It's set up that the East Montpelier Fire Department is a separate entity, and they manage the capital plan and their assets. They may ask the town for money, but so far, they've actually managed it with their own resources and borrowed the money and paid for it themselves. That hasn't, they have not had to go to the town for, to buy equipment. That works for me. Yeah. They, they've taken it out of their own uh, revenue. Okay. I didn't know that. I mean, just, I was just well, looking at the normal process that the town uses to buy capital. Yeah, but this is right. so, so, so essentially, the rule is that you can, you, you can loan, you can take a loan for up to five years without having to go to the bond bank, but you can't do it beyond five years. And that's well, this, this would be 25 years. <laughs> I know, but this, what I'm talking about is the municipal lending. You have to do that five, or if it's above five, it has to go to a bond, right? A town bond. Um, it, we actually use the revenue that we derive from our operations and pay for our own capital investments. So we can just, we can take a 10 year loan because we are 501c3 and we're a separate corporation. And the monies actually don't come from the town, they come from our work. Right, that's, that's what Seth was telling me. Right. And there is an agreement about that. And again, the agreement says that if if we go to the two select boards and they approve, they approve that we can go uh, purchase a truck, we don't have to go to the voters unless the town select boards decide they need that approval. But that's um, the only time that we've talked about getting voter approval is if, he's, if the fire department ambulance service came to the town and asked them for money. They're not right. asking us for money yet. They've right. asked for permission to spend the money because anything that's over a certain amount it comes out of the capital plan. They have to ask the town. It's twenty five thousand, isn't it? Twenty uh, or twenty five. Yeah, it's twenty. Twenty. So anything over twenty thousand, they come to the towns and ask permission if they can spend the money out of their capital reserves and or take a loan. So that's how the process has worked so far. It's just that in this large expenditure, they may anticipate asking the town for a certain amount of money to help jumpstart that truck. Right. So if we go back to the, if we go back here, essentially the, the plan shows 120,000 a year as the income. And, yeah. 
and we're not sure it might be more or less depending on future. So this number, essentially, when you get out to here, these may turn back to positives just because we don't know. Um, yeah. We don't, so I, I haven't predicted an increase in this over the year. The same thing with the expenses. These are the expenses that we pay prior to the capital reserve, and they may fluctuate up and down depending on how we handle those things. And, yes. current, and it shows as of January, there's going to be 98. Well, that was capital. what was in the that was what was in the capital fund as of January 2020. Uh, right, 2020. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, so, the other, so the other thing that sort of showed up here is now we've bought these power cots and defibrillators and that loan it shows here, essentially we only paid this much because we only bought it at this, this late part of the year. This is the annual payment and this is the last payment. So that's essentially added into the, the total liability each year. <clears throat> Don Welch and I had set up some numbers to put money aside for uh, capital replacements in the building itself. So this line had never really shown up on the um, on the capital plan. And this equipment is probably on average about $10,000 a year with um, medical equipment, uh, gas meters, other small, um, small but more expensive things that don't end up in the in the regular budget. So that line item has essentially appeared to make sure that we're we're figuring that into our total plan. So that's not, so the fibrillators has its own line. That's correct. Okay. And the power cuts. <clears throat> so your fixed expenses are already pretty high. There's 75,000, right? Oh, 87,000. That's your fixed expense with your payments. Well, no. So if you look over here, yeah, I so, see. so if you look at all the long-term reserve, that's essentially how much you need to pay each year, depending on how long you own it. Okay. So yeah. Essentially, our goal for capital to to handle all of this stuff up here, we would need to spend one hundred and two thousand a year. Okay. Out of the out of the capital. Out of the capital monies. Yeah. And so essentially, if we if we make one hundred and twenty and we spend twenty, that lives leaves us just around a hundred left over. So it's a pretty tight capital plan if, it, yeah. if we do everything that's in here. Um, so that's where we're at. And so you're only going to spend fourteen thousand dollars on engine four a year. That's what it says. Long-term reserve budget for engine four. It costs three hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, per twenty-five years. Oh, oh, I see. But that doesn't really match up with. Right. That doesn't match up with it with the again. So if we purchased and took a twenty-five year loan, those you're not going to do that. No, we're not going to do that because the interest would eat us. Yeah, you're going to do it for five or ten or something. Right. So you can see that these loans up here were for five at thirty a year. Yeah. These are going to be ten because the vehicles are that much difference in price. Yeah. I um, I see it. You yeah. you will you will go negative it looks like but that's well and again when we get out here into twenty eight yeah we're in the deficit of eighty one thousand unless these numbers grow right um, right and so there's no telling what that's going to be and this may be the point where we have to ask the town to assist us to continue this plan for keeping these vehicles and equipment alive yeah. So, and in 2026, Callus is $65 is really going to make or break whether this is in the black. That's right. Particularly after you collect all the interest on it over those years. That's right. But the, thing that, is, the thing that I'm, I'm confused about is when you have your long-term reserve budget that you're putting in for all this machinery, that doesn't really match up with the reality of the payments. costs on the, on the right. So if you're going to be negative, you're really going to be negative when you get out there because a lot of these vehicles are going to have a higher payment than a 25 year or 10 year, whatever it is, life that you put in the long term reserve budget. Is that correct? Um, I mean, just like your engine four, you have $14,000 in there. But it's really going to be a lot bigger than that when you get a few years down the road because some of these vehicles are going to need to be replaced. And it's going to cost you more per year than your long-term reserve budget. So the so the thing is, though, if you look, um, 
so if if it's 25 years and we're only paying more for 10 years than paying a smaller amount for 25 mm -hmm. it averages out to to be able the, the bottom line is how much can you handle each year yeah that's right that that's really all that matters is what you can handle yeah. and so essentially um if you look at this number down here the essentially we have to shoot for about 102,000 and in some years here here we're at 71 but yeah. then you get back up in here and this is where it's going to start to diminish the the whatever savings you've had ahead of time uh -huh. and again it, it, again it's how you stack these things up to each other and how many trucks you're paying for in a year right and if we decide if we decide we don't need to replace the utility truck cuz it'll still go along we can move some of this to another year or or whatever but Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is the this is the reality that we think replacement of the vehicles is, and therefore we end up with these numbers as we're growing. This is where we're going to be if we want to keep those trucks replaced at the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. Toby, yes. It also, uh, if you have any trade-in value on these, that may make a difference too and save you some money. Right. So, yeah, so, a, so a 25 year old fire truck is really only worth about $20,000. So it's not going to make a significant impact on, on any of this. Yeah. And, it, and if we do essentially take everything out to its real active life and it, it's really not going to have a lot of value at the end. I, I, but I agree, Don, there is some, there's some number here that we don't see because I haven't calculated out and that's a total unknown. Sometimes you get somebody that just has got to have your old truck for 40 grand and other people say it's, hey, you might as well drive it over a cliff. I don't want anything to do with it. And that's just yeah. an unknown. Yeah, I will say that I, I like you have adopted my format very well. Thank you. I, well, I follow the master. <laughs> I don't think Don usually doubles up on the year 2025, but whatever. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good catch. It's in there somewhere. Uh, any other questions on that? So that's essentially where we're at. We're probably going to be talking soon about um, moving ahead with a new engine to replace engine four. Was it the was it the last time you bought a truck you ended up getting a demo or was that a rescue? So the the rescue two that we bought the big truck with all the rescue tools on it and a small pump and a small tank um we were very lucky to find something that actually fit what we needed and was only i think three years old when we bought it yeah that's what i thought the problem with the fire trucks that we use um there's no really good used ones on the marketplace that fit our needs for replacing the fire trucks that we have it's a two-person cab with a side mount pump and foam and place for a fold of tank and you know 1500 gallons of water there i did a look today just to see what was in the marketplace and there's nothing that's anywhere near um what we need um, a lot of them are crew cabs so they're too long to fit in our building um, and there's just a lot of things that a lot of the rural fire trucks that we would be looking at don't ever come up on the market because they everybody keeps them for 20 years so we're really looking at a brand new truck to replace engine four what do you think the cost is going to be it'll be three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. so toby if i understand the proposal correctly it is to stick with this capital planning budget as presented and then come year 2027 or 2028, whatever it is, when you remove the uh, duplicated year, then come to the towns and ask for some money to, to fill in the deficit? Unless, unless the estimated revenue line grows enough to take care of those deficits. Right. I think there's a lot of unknowns that are well, yeah. and, again, and again, so so if we trade, if we sell one truck and get down, get twenty five grand, that forty thousand becomes fifteen. If we trade something else or get some resale value in anything else, 
and again, if we make more than 120,000 put away, uh, all those numbers can change. This is just a map that says this is where we think we're going to be, and it's not it's not taking pie in the sky estimates at, at revenue. <clears throat> well, it's just it's a best it's a best guess right now. That's so there's, there's no proposal on the table looking at the numbers to say cut back on the amount of total equipment or find another way of augmenting revenue or anything like that. It's just go with this and do the best we can. Is that right? Right. Well, and again, capital plans change every year. You something sure. breaks and you got to buy something else and you take another loan and you decide to put something off another year. I mean, it's it's just like when you guys had an excavator that was all of a sudden blew up and the only thing you could do is buy a new one. You didn't plan it. It changed the capital plan. All that all the money that you had saved up for something else all of a sudden was spent on that excavator or that loader. You just have to be. You just have to adapt. I mean, this this tries to look at what is a realistic income stream and a replacement schedule that we need to keep the equipment available for what we do. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Good. I don't know if it sounds good, but I understand. <laughs> Uh, call log review. Yeah. So this is, this is for the total year. So we keep our, our run you sheet. To, you got to blow it up, Toby, please. That's all I got. Like That's it? That's it. Okay. I sent it to you. You guys should have all of this in your computer. Yes, I know. Toby, you keep saying that. Yes. But that takes a lot. I don't, I'm not going to print every single thing off. And it, it, it takes a lot of paper, a lot of toner. Thank you, Bruce, for printing this off. <laughs> Maybe I'm, we I'm doing, well, mine, I think our select board is doing all this from home. So most stuff we are printing ourselves. Well, and I'm looking at it on a screen. I haven't wasted one piece of paper on any of this, so it's- Well, I did, Toby, I did look at it on the screen, but I don't have a complete memory of everything that was there. So okay. thank you. If you can blow it up more, if you can't, that's fine. That's it. Thank you, Toby. Yeah. I think you should keep that 65, Denise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it to buy a toner. <laughs> um, so essentially through I guess uh, this was through November, 566 total, 433 ambulance calls, 261 transports to date. How does that line up with the previous years? I don't know, because this snapshot, I don't think we've ever really done this call log in December, I just, you know, Ty put it on the agenda, so I threw it out there. I think okay. the only way the only way you can do apples to apples is if you do a full year comparison to another full year. Yeah, because usually it's just once a year you do this. Yeah, and we usually do it in the one after January so that we do it year to year, so it's a total comparison year to year. Yeah, so you've got something to compare. Right. Because I'm looking at it, and I don't really know. Right. It's well, like, all, I can, oh. all I can tell you is essentially how many events were in East Montpelier, 263, Calisad yeah. 99, Marshfield had 85, Plainfield had yeah. 83. So essentially it just gives you an idea of where we're spreading out our stuff. Yeah. If it has gone through November, however, this is definitely down from the norm. Uh, last year was over 700 at the sure. end of the year. Um, but Remember the 700 included the burn permits? Yeah. And look at the burn permits. Um, yeah, it's a difference of 30. You have oh. 53. Yeah. Yeah, last year was at 84. Yeah. Time will tell. Time will tell. Anyway, so that's, like I said, I don't think it's really relevant because... Um, It's not complete year to year to sort of compare. And, and the call log is calendar, not fiscal. That's correct. Toby, the, the, the burn permits, is that, do you, is that just 
going to a site when there's a when they have a burn? Yeah. So in East in East in East Montpelier, we actually go and visit everybody's um, pile of wood before they burn it. So essentially, it's a time when we go out. Somebody, someone on the staff goes out and and does a, a view of the scene and make sure everything is, is safe and sound before we issue the permit. Okay. And well, we, I'll be calling and, you and East, and East, Mont, and East, East Montpelier Fire does not do permits in Calais. It's only in East Montpelier. Right. And, and how about after snow's on the ground? <laughs> um, permits aren't required if there's snow on the ground. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so go ahead, burn away. Oh, no, there's no the snow, next week, maybe. The snow <laughs> melted, so you're, you're going to come see us. Yeah. Um, the last three items, I'm not sure what the chief had in mind, um, uh, what he wanted to talk about. Those are his items, and he didn't discuss with me what they were. Well, it says um, new, str new stretchers and defibrillators. Is that in the budget? No, those are the ones that we just bought. And we no. talked, with, yeah, we bought defibrillators and. And those are those. And the power and the power cuts. So, so stretchers means power cuts. Correct. Maybe he was just going to tell us how wonderful they all are. Well, they certainly are. Good. And rescue two and rescue three loan. I have no idea what he wanted to talk about. That. Hmm. Those are the ones you do have the loan on. Right. Yeah, those are the two. Yeah, so that's about sixty thousand dollars a year in loan payments for those two, and I think there's another four years on those. Okay. And it may be that he had thought about paying one down ahead of time to lower. I I don't know. I'm not sure what he had in mind, so I can't answer that. Um, so that's whether he thought that we should lower some of the capital fund. Because you know we're roughly sitting at a hundred and it's continuing to grow, so um, maybe, maybe he wanted to pay it off sooner or something. Well, and again, if we pay it off sooner, there'll be less interest. That's I think mm -hmm. the only the only thing that would make a difference. But maybe but we again, can get a Ouija board out and try to figure out what he was thinking that way. <laughs> nope, I don't think that would. <laughs> I don't think that would help. The interest rate's pretty low, isn't it, Toby? Yeah, I think it's like. Well, Three and a half, or I just I don't remember because we did so when we bought Rescue Three, the ambulance, the demo ambulance, we refinanced the Rescue Two at the same time. So we essentially did both as a as you know a current loans instead of carrying the the existing one and adding another because it was cheaper for us to lower lower that monthly uh, or that annual cost by refinancing the, the re big rescue truck. Um, as far as COVID goes, um, we're, we struggle like everybody with it, you know, you know, finding PPE and purchasing it and having enough on board. We have been lucky that we haven't had interactions with a lot of positive COVID patients. I think, we, I think we've had three or four that I'm aware of. And, you know, we're taking all precautions to keep the staff safe and not exposed during work. Um, we have had some volunteers get into a situation where they did have an exposure um, and had to stay away from the station for a while. And we just had a couple of, of our per diem people in their other jobs do get an, a positive exposure, uh, but turned out to have a negative result. But it meant that they missed a couple of shifts that we had them scheduled for. So that has been kind of a concern for us that staffing has been affected by COVID. Um, we've had to call mutual aid a couple of times because of that. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not a cost to anybody. It just means, you know, we're asking other departments to do our job for us, which we try not to do. Yeah, I mean, in this time of the way things are, helping each other is not a bad thing. Yep, and we do it. Um, in fact, that's what Ty is doing right now is mutual aid to Berry City. Yeah. So that's the budget proposal, updates on the financials, the capital plan, and I, that's all we have for you. I can answer any questions you might have um, on anything else.
I did have a question. Um, I was looking at the audit report, mm -hmm. and it says something about your EIN number being shared with somebody else. So when we took on the Cub Scouts, um, we had to we had to establish a checking account with them, and so they used our number. They have actually they've closed their their group, their Cub or whatever it is, their uh, gang of kids. Um, so that actually has disappeared from uh, being a, a liability. Okay. Rose or a Cliff, you have any questions? Well, that was actually the question I was going to ask, so you beat me to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for explaining it, Toby. I think they call them a den, but I'm not sure. A den, hey. there you go. That's, that's okay. Right. Yep. Um, I, yeah, I just wanted to say I'm sorry that I was late. Um, I had computer issues and um, I did, you know, review the documents um, ahead of time. Um, seems pretty straightforward, although I'm sorry that I missed Toby's wonderful explanation. Um, but I really did appreciate that explanation about the um, capital plan. Um, Greg and I actually we're looking at it together last night. And um, so I appreciate it. So thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for keeping our community safe and um, best regards to all. Great. Yeah, and, the, and one of the biggest things is, is thank you for all that you do and make sure that you guys are all taking care of yourselves. We're trying to. Good. And you're currently in working on um, Christmas baskets, donations, that kind of stuff. Right. So do you, you all have a, a Facebook page or? We do. Some, um, because in East Callis, we're gonna be starting at the East Callis General Store on the porch once a week. There is gonna be, um, let me go back to my email account and, tell you what this is it's everybody it's the everybody eats program and they are going to be having meals to hand out to families in need really no questions asked um not starting this week but starting the following week on thursdays from like four to six so if you know families um in in our area, it doesn't have to be a callous resident. You know, just spread the word that there's going to be these meals offered for pickup on our porch starting December 10th from 4 to 6. And this is through the, it's the Everybody Eats program. So I think it's through, I don't know if it's through Capstone or not. But anyways, just so. Put that out there if you have a, a way to advertise for that. Um, let folks know. Okay. I guess that's it, right, Toby? Yeah, it's, that's all I have for you guys. I don't think there's anything else that uh, that we need to share. Uh, and can answer any other questions you may have about how we do what we do. I'm all set. Hey, thanks, Toby. Appreciate yeah, your thank you, presentation. Toby. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your work and thanks for walking us through thank this. Thank you. Time. So, Callis Select Board, would somebody like to move to adjourn? So move. So move. Okay. okay. Second. Um, let's vote. Rose. Aye. Cliff. Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Take care. Good night. Good night. Thank you again. Good night. Thanks, Toby. Thank you for tuning in. I'll, I'll move that we adjourn in East Montpelier. I'll second. Um, any more discussion? Are all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The aye. ayes have it. The meeting's adjourned. Bye-bye. Thank you, aye. folks. Aye.